Hello, hello and welcome. My name is Michelle. I am your Emotional Resilience Coach and it is fantastic to have you join me here today. Thank you. I am really, really super excited. Uh, for those of you who don't know and are new to my channel, I have written a book, Who Are You Beneath the Pain? This is something that becomes a bit fuzzy for us, becomes a bit confusing. We have so many layers that we have built up. We sometimes show up in ways and means that we don't even recognize ourselves anymore. We lose ourselves. And I think part of healing is that journey back to ourselves to find out who it is that we are. If this resonates with you, please don't forget to go on over to Amazon. My book is called Who Are You Beneath the Pain? I am Michelle Liddick, your Emotional Resilience Coach, and it will be fantastic to have you on this journey with me. All right, uh, please don't forget to hit like, subscribe, the notifications button, and please do share, share, share. That's how it gets around. With anyone you feel this would resonate with, please do share. So today we're going to be talking from my book, um, Learning to Sit With Your Feelings, part, and we're going to just cover it very briefly. I have done lots of other videos in the past about learning to sit with our feelings, but there's just a little more, more that I want to explore with you today. I have come across, as I'm sure you have, many, many metaphors and sayings about feelings. There's a lot of thought around feelings. Things like Repressing anger is like stuffing a trash uh, in a garbage can and then obviously there's nothing left and it all spills out. Or when you resent someone, it's like drinking poison and expecting them to die. Anxiety is a hungry monster that gets bigger and bigger as you feed it, right? There's so much focus on emotions, what emotions are, what they look like, uh, but we hate them. Right? We don't want to be with the uncomfortable emotions. We don't want to sit with the hard and the difficult. We've spent years and years and years refining the process where we get to block that, where we don't need to be with it. We don't want to be with it. We just protect ourselves from it. We build walls. We have ways and means that we just protect ourselves from feeling. We either freeze or we are constantly busy. We distract ourselves. We fight, we turn it against other people so we don't have to sit with our pain. There's so many ways, and I've covered them in past videos, so please do go back and check them out, that we use as coping skills when the uncomfortable and that hard comes up for us. All right, so most trauma survivors have no idea what it means to be self-compassionate. When I have coached people in the very beginning, they look at me, they're absolutely disgusted, and they're like, but that just seems really, really self-indulgent, right? And it feels like if we're going to be self-indulgent, then we're selfish, and that's part of our problem. And so we just spin in this confusion of trying to get out of it, but really what you're doing is you're staying stuck in it, and it really is so messy. So as a trauma survivor, you don't take note of your feelings, you don't care about your feelings, you in fact try and avoid your feelings. For a lot of people, feelings make you weak, it's seen as something that is going to destroy you, bring you down. Feelings become the enemy. So our rehearsed response is to avoid, suppress and move on. We need to hit rock bottom before we look for help, not unlike an addict. Pain is a great motivator to propel us forward and through. Healing comes when we accept the pain instead of trying to resist it. It seems counterintuitive, but so many healing techniques start out that way. We look at them and we think, ah, really? That doesn't seem right. And we don't want to do it. We don't want to go there. There comes a point when you are ready, however, to try something new. You realize that your old ways, your old patterns, they're not working for you, they're not helping you, they're not conducive to you feeling better or healing, and so you look for different ways of being. 
And that is where the magic comes in. I realized it was time to get out of my head and into my body and just feel whatever came up for me with no judgment. We live in the information age and in this information age, we are very cerebral. We are very much about analyzing, sometimes overanalyzing, thinking too much. But really what we want to do is we feel that we can just sort it all out in our mind. Uh, I am not against knowledge. Knowledge is a huge tool. It gives us leverage. But what we sometimes do is we stay in there for so long that we get stuck and we ignore what is happening in our body. We ignore the sensations that are coming up for us. We ignore the messages that are coming up for us. We try and tackle it from an intellectual point of view instead of slipping into our body and just being with our feelings. All right. Learning to recognize emotions and tying them to the past can become difficult, can become terrifying, can make us go, oh, no, 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 I am not going to be doing that. Um, and because of the years and years of suppression and dissociating, this can be really difficult because this is something new for you to learn. Uh, you're not used to giving yourself gentle time and attention. You're not used to seeing the choices in front of you. But what you do know is that maybe you're sick and tired of being sick and tired and you want something different. Uh, your, your brain is going to fight on you. I speak about how dissociation and brain fog was still for a really, really long time my default when feeling overwhelmed. Um, I was meditating, which I'll do videos on at a later point, and certainly having great experiences with that, but I was still struggling. Um, I was really, really battling because I was not at a place where I was ready to get comfortable with my uncomfortable emotions and to embrace them, to get out of my head and into my body. Um, I had reached a point where I'd gone from a functioning adult to feeling crippled under the weight of it all. I needed something to work with. And so I learned to sit with my feelings and to just be with it. And again, this is not something where we need to go full out on hours on end. Our brain is going to go, mm, don't have time for that, too busy, too many things to do. You just want to ease yourself into it and be gentle with yourself, right? I just, just take a few minutes, pause the video, take a couple of minutes and no judgment, no, oh, I shouldn't be feeling this. Oh, I shouldn't be. If you think, find yourself saying, I shouldn't be thinking this, you're in the wrong place. You need to spend some more time just getting to know what is going on in your body. And the society we live in, we don't generally like our bodies. We're not comfortable with our bodies. We fight with our bodies and we just tend to have a hard time. We try and stay up all here and we then become very disconnected and our body is giving us so much information about what is actually happening with us. So perhaps you want to just take maybe even two minutes, three minutes at a push and just pause and be with yourself and just get used to the things that you've been ignoring. Kind of figure out what is it that's going on with me? What is it that I'm feeling? What are the actual sensations that are happening in my body. We're making friends with them. We're becoming acquainted with them right now and we're becoming familiar with them. We're not going to fight with them, judge them, run from them, hide from them. All the things that are natural and part of our programming, we're not going to do that. We're just going to take a couple of minutes and we just want to be curious. What is going on with us, right? Uh, and just I just use words that are describing the physical sensation. Is it hot? Is it cold? Is there a flutter? Is there a heaviness? Right? What is going on for you right now? I can tell you sitting here, I'm going to take a deep breath with you. And I can tell you, I am in a good place today. I feel grounded. I feel settled. What that sensation is, is there is a 
a little bit of a slight butterfly at the top of my stomach, very, very slight little flutter. Uh, everything feels very rested and very open. There's no constriction. I'm not closing up. There's no tightness. I can, it feels open. It feels warm. And it feels like a very slight little flutter, almost unnoticeable. It's almost imperceptible. But as I breathe out, I can connect with that little flutter at the top of my stomach that just makes me know and feel warm, comforting, and that all is well. So take a couple of minutes, do this exercise with yourself and just learn what it is your body is telling you. Get acquainted with it. It is something that's going to take practice and time and patience. But from someone who was in extreme dissociation and brain fog and so disconnected from myself, I am here to say to you, it is doable. And when you learn to do it and you become more comfortable with it, it will just keep growing and expanding with you as you learn to have a most beautiful relationship with you. All right, let's just end with a nice deep breath together. And out. Give yourself a great pat on the back or a high five. Honor all you've been through. Honor all you have survived. Honor the courage that you have to sit with me now here and just realize that you are doing so much better than you realize. Have a most empowering day.